What's up guys, Rob the Awesome here, and today I'm here to present you guys with a three-part back-to-back lineup video representation of all the balance changes made in the Meet Your Match update and explaining how much each and every one of them is balanced for the better. Let's go! Because this has three parts, and yes, they are all up right now, each one contains three classes to span out the huge explanations and changes made with this update. The first part contains the offensive classes, the second one contains the defensive classes, and the third part contains the support classes. Or at least that's what Valve actually labels them. I recommend you watch all three parts to understand everything about why Valve did the things they did and have an advantage over other players with the knowledge you take from any of the class lists. It doesn't hurt to know what your main class as well as your enemy's class have in terms of new changes. So sit back and relax as I explain the changes made to the scout, the soldier, and the pyro in part one. Here we go. The Meet Your Match update presented us with a lot of weapon and class changes to make an overall balanced feel for everyone in the new competitive game mode. By having insight from the beta, Valve could collect that data in order to change certain items to be balanced all around. Let's find out if what they collected was worth it, or if they overall don't know what they are doing with their game. To start it all off, the scout got some pretty neat buffs that added some nifty abilities as well as some punishments to some of his arsenal's more powerful weapons. The Criticola added a Mark for Death debuff for 2 seconds after the buff effect expires. A lot of people felt like this weapon got off easy with its very non-existent nerf. 2 seconds is really not a long time, and doesn't really seem all that punishing for extra mini crit damage. However, when you account for how short of a time the effects last, it really punishes scouts for not knowing the timing of their favorite drink. When you have extra damage, you tend to want to go in all the way. Though, in the heat of the battle, the drink can swindle on you and that's when you are at your weakest. Again, it's not really that big of a nerf, but it's at least something to keep scouts from always being on the aggressive and makes them a bit more cautious before proceeding. But why wasn't there a bigger nerf? Isn't this weapon overpowered or something? Not exactly. Although it does give the user great speed and overall big damage, it gives a small 10% damage penalty throughout the effect, making soldiers and diplomats projectiles a whole lot deadlier. The rockets and sticky bombs that couldn't kill you mid-range before now become a one-shot kill, so having a soldier bomb onto the scout for an instant kill was all you needed to do to get rid of those Criticola scouts. Proper coordination and conditioning can beat out the Criticola very easily. It's not very super god tier, in which it needs the biggest nerf ever. But it's still a good side grade to make yourself better. It got a nerf that is fair and what it deserved, making this an overall balanced weapon in gameplay. Another neat balance change was made to the shortstop primary weapon, that added an alt fire attack that reaches out at your opponent and pushes them. It also removed the healing bonus on the wearer and reduces the pushback vulnerability from plus 40% to plus 20%. Reducing the pushback vulnerability makes the overall mechanics fair. The reason for this nerf was that a single air blast or rocket would send scouts flying backwards for an easy escape towards a health pack, actually making it an upside rather than a downside. By reducing it to half, it gives pyros and soldiers a fair distance to catch them, but enough pushback for scouts to make an escape if they strafe properly. The removal of the healing bonus on the weapon is due to the new mechanic for the medic that lets them run as fast as their heal target. By healing a scout, you can forever keep up to him, giving him the full on healing bonus forever rather than the quick heal and leave tactics they did before. If the effect were still added to the weapon, it would make scouts tanky and unstoppable, making the medic scout combination very unbearable in gameplay. It's a great mechanic when the medic can't keep following the scout, but not so much if you can run out of speed and stay on him for the majority of the game. Lastly, the push mechanic was added to give the weapon a new positive stat now that the heal bonus was removed. It's a neat concept that gives scouts a tiny air blast by pushing them upward for a free shot. However, the mechanic is pretty broken and really not worth it. The range at which you need to push people is super small. You need to be up in their face to achieve such a tiny air blast which, in all honesty, isn't worth risking your neck for a broken mechanic. I believe that this tiny air blast concept with the shortstop can be a great thing and a major meta changer. However, Valve needs to seriously test out this mechanic and up the potential of the skill in order to get it anywhere in gameplay. I do have faith that this ability will get better and it does make a great substitute positive skill for the healing bonus. Mix it all together with the nerf on the pushback vulnerability and you got yourself a really good set of balanced stats. Speaking of primary weapons, the Soda Popper got a couple of changes as well that removes the gun's ability to gain height by running around, but instead has the ability to gain height by dealing damage to your opponents. This was a well needed change since Soda Popper scouts would abuse running around in circles to get a very good mechanic anytime they wanted. 
The being in complete control of an ability that gives scouts 6 jumps at a time was a little too good, and needed to be earned rather than tossed around left and right. He needed to deal 350 damage in order to get the max charge and really earn the mechanic that people exploited all the time, which overall isn't that bad with combination weapon play with your primary and your secondary. People need to understand that this makes the gun a little bit better since spamming the hype mechanic all the time, though unpredictable at the start, becomes tediously easy to read patterns in mid-flight and makes the special bonus into something that soldiers and heavies can pinpoint out of the air no problem. By actually earning the charge, people won't be able to see it coming as easily anymore, making it more unpredictable and overall still a great weapon. This new mechanic is for the best, and really makes this weapon shine. Though it still doesn't change on my list compared to the other scatter guns, since it was a nerf regardless, I do say that this mechanic makes this a balanced weapon. Lastly, a totally out of left field buff that nobody saw coming was a buff to the gimmick weapon we all know and love, the Sun on a Stick. It gave the weapon the ability to take 25% less damage from fire while deployed. Finally, this gimmick weapon has a use for overall scout gameplay, and can be super useful against a really good pyro. Though, before the weapon was buffed, it was used to work together with pyros to achieve great damage with the melee. However, the likelihood of a pyro and a scout working together are one in a million. This was a really well needed change that nobody thought would happen because gimmick weapons were something that Valve hasn't touched in a long, long time. Now the time has come to make this melee rise. It is actually now a viable weapon, and the buff given to this melee makes it overall a balanced weapon. Though Valve may be slightly out of touch with perfecting new mechanics added to weapons, their overall ability to balance scout weapons have proven exceptional and balanced throughout. Let's check out some of the new soldier changes they made and see if their work on those weapons continues to impress. The first thing that got majorly updated for the soldier was the rocket jumper. They updated the model, the materials, and the all-around sounds to make it compensate for its childish aspects. Though it may seem like a minor change to a lot of people, I can appreciate this change that keeps free of place from using this like a real weapon. A lot of people hate the design. It's childish, looks like something out of a Happy Meal, and it's disgusting all around. However, that is exactly how it's supposed to be presented. The design has to be obvious to everyone, even the person using it, that its only intended purpose is to help out with rocket jumping, not to deal damage. With new weapon skins coming out, looking just like the previous rocket jumper design, it was high time it got a redesign that made it obvious that it was its own thing. It's so obviously choyish that anybody would look at it and think, why is there a giant sign on it? And why is it made out of giant Legos? Overall understanding that the rocket jumper isn't even a real weapon. This design will reduce the amount of new people being fooled into using this weapon in casual and competitive play, so that it overall doesn't hurt their team by actually thinking they could do damage with it. It definitely needed the remodeling, and it's still an overall balanced weapon for its intended purpose. The disciplinary action got a neat change to how teamwork speed works, by reducing the duration of the speed bonus given to teammates from 3 seconds to 2 seconds. Have you guys ever had that moment where constantly whipping your teammates when register extra speed boosts? This was mainly due to the fact that both you and your teammates had equal speed boost duration entities that would keep the game thinking you were still boosting. It would cause a huge gap of time between each swing not registering hits that would normally help to get you and your teammates to the front line quicker, which was really a huge issue. By reducing the duration of your teammates speed boost, it makes it so that soldiers, one of the slowest classes in the game, can catch up to teammates with the extra second of speed and continuously whip them to move up faster and further without too much of a gap. Not to mention, changing the times at which the effects last makes the glitchy disciplinary action bullcrap fixed once and for all. Well, I mean, the registration of weapons in general can still be a bother sometimes with ping and whatnot, but normally there shouldn't be, if at all any, problems with this hugely underrated fix that I was super excited to see. This change makes the disciplinary action that super support tool that it needed to be, and by adding this very small nerf, makes this weapon overall bug free and balanced. Now the moment has arrived, the one gun that probably every single person in the world wants me to talk about, and that is the Righteous Bison. This thing took a beating for sure, quote unquote fixing a bug causing players to be hit by the same projectile multiple times, getting rid of its major damage capabilities. The point blank damage got increased while maximum range damage decreased. And they even went as far as to slow the projectile down by 30% while reducing even more potential damage by 25% for every other target it passes through. That's a lot of nerfs, certainly something to get mad about but there is really a simple explanation for everything. 
The Righteous Bison had an amazing use in competitive, a strategy that worked a huge majority of the time and wrecked havoc among the teams. The Righteous Bison Kritzkrieg Strategy There were teams that would get free Kritzkrieg Uber and pop on the soldier with the Righteous Bison, taking out endless waves of enemies. The gun had fast reload, huge damage potential, and wiped teams out like crazy. So you're probably thinking, so what? Well, the update is meant to focus primarily on matchmaking. With Valve understanding the huge potential this gun had, they had to nerf it to the point where it evened up with the Chris Craig, but butchered the normality of the gun entirely. Sure, some teams did run this strategy, and boy, does it really work at taking down those teams. However, it's not exactly fair for the soldiers who didn't use it like that. I do agree that its normal usages are unusable, to the point that it wastes a secondary slot. But it's meant to level up with the Chris Craig when it ubers you. But even so, soldiers would rather use the rocket launcher with that uber, among other things. So is this change fair for everyone? No. But it's fair for those that abuse the strategy in the beta. I think that they should fix the weapon's normal usage abilities and understand that a simple crits Craig shouldn't be the reason to nerf a gun to hell. However, in a competitive setting with a crits Craig medic, it's a balanced weapon. Otherwise, it's pretty shitty on its own. It literally needs an energy source for it to work. It is a futuristic weapon after all, and we all know how tedious it is to charge our mobile devices even now. The Righteous Bison is sadly no different. Rest in pepperonis, my friend. Rest in pepperonis. With the soldier weapons coming to a close, the Righteous Bison continues to be a disappointment to those that didn't abuse the weapon. I hope Valve gets to understand that a more casual balance change rather than changing a weapon because of an Uber would better suit the community standards. But now that the soldier is out of the way, we get to some of the well-needed changes that our dear friend the Pyro has to offer. Every single one of Pyro's flamethrowers got a neat little buff that makes fighting the combo a fair and even battle. All direct damage you do with flamethrowers reduces the metagun healing and resists shield effects by 25%. Every Pyro knows that running straight into a medic healing a heavy or demo would be a death sentence. The amount of healing medic could do would always be more than what the Pyros could dish out in damage. There was no winning that fight, and most of the time the heal target would just obliterate the pyro, which left pyros behind the combo and away from the action. With this buff, they can put out more damage than the metagun can get back, giving the pyro a standing chance destroying the heal target and the medic in one foul swoop. This makes pyros even deadlier, and a more viability in pushes. It was well needed for a more balanced fight against combination pushes, which happens 99% of the time in comp and casual. Having another class be the reason for another class not putting out his maximum potential is no good. And even though this may be a somewhat small and whatever buff that we didn't even know we needed, it makes for a fair and balanced weapon in the midst of combat. I'm glad Valve is at least innovating Pyro to be more of a threat. They understand that Pyro is not really viable in a lot of situations, so taking these first steps is the start to making Pyro great again. Speaking of making weapons great again, the Man Melter removed the hidden 20% fire rate penalty that a lot of people didn't like to begin with. The hidden penalty was a pain in the butt to remember and control with this weapon. It wasn't added to the weapon, so why would it be a thing? It was labeled a bad weapon because of the speed, but now that it's removed, it can provide more potential damage, easier air blast hits, and has a supportive aspect that makes it the awesome weapon that people will love. There are really no complaints with this weapon anymore. It's a great flare gun now with it gone, and people will definitely appreciate it a whole lot more. It's now a copy-paste weapon without a falloff of waiting for what seems like forever for another fire-off. The weapon is great, and now a balanced weapon with its unique mechanics. Well, that's it for part one, folks. But what are you doing here? Part two is out now. Go, go, go. Click on the annotation or look at the sidebar. I have it in the playlist. Go, go check out part two with the new demo man, heavy and engineer changes. But while you're still here, please leave a like and even subscribe for the amount of effort I put into these videos. It would mean a lot and it would show that you guys want more of these types of videos on the channel. Remember to be awesome, stay awesome, and to have an awesome day. I'm Rob the Awesome and I'll see you on part two. Ciao for now.